Today I'm going to be talking about the three Vim plugins that I find to be absolutely essential for doing modern web development in Vim. Now when I say modern web development, I mean we're not just going to be working with HTML tags, we're also going to want to work with JSX. If you don't know, JSX is basically HTML embedded into your JavaScript. Now you can say whether or not this is a good idea, but it's the direction that web development has gone to, so we're gonna have to work with it. So I guess I'll just show you what we're actually producing today. I've already got it all set up, so I can show you a pretty good example. Let's just make a HTML file first, and then I will show you what it looks like in JavaScript. So in here, what we can do, let's say we wanted to, I don't know, start making some tags. Now, this right here, this is COC. I'm not going to be talking about COC today because I just find that to be essential to doing programming in Vim. You could use something else like you complete me, but having some sort of auto completion is pretty much essential for doing programming. If you don't have it, I'd recommend looking into that, but I'm not going to be talking about that today. I'm just going to be focusing on the web stuff. So let's just make, I don't know, an H2 tag. And as you can see, it's auto closed the tag for me. And let's say we want to put some stuff in here. And one thing you might want to do is maybe you're like, oh, I don't actually need an H2 tag. Maybe I actually needed a paragraph. So you could do something like change that over to a paragraph tag, or you could also change it, I don't know, to an at tag if you wanted to. So change that as well to an at tag, or you could also embed multiple layers of tags. So let's say we want to put an H2 tag in here, put some stuff in here, and let's say you're like, okay, well this at tag, I don't need it to be an at tag anymore. I actually need it to be a paragraph tag. As you can see, that's worked just fine. We can also change the indented layer as well. So we can change this over to, I don't know, let's change this one to a paragraph tag as well. So as you can see, you can very easily create new tags, you can very easily rename your tags, and you can also delete the tags. So let's say we actually wanted all of this to just be in one paragraph rather than be embedded in a double layer paragraph thing we've got here. So what we can do is just delete the surrounding tag. And now it's been all put into the same block. All of this behavior is very basic stuff that something like VS Code can do, and a lot of other more complete editors can do, but out of the box, Vim, you can't really do it, obviously. People are going to say, oh, everything you can do with a Vim plugin, you can just do with Vim script. Sure, but then you might as well just install the plugin because you're going to be making the same behavior anyway. Now, let's just have a look at it working over in JavaScript because with a lot of the Vim plugins that focus on doing tags, they just completely ignore the fact that JSX exists. So let's just make a JavaScript file and bash out some junk that we need to get it to work. What we can do in here now is basically just start creating tags like we normally would. So we can say we want an h2 tag in there, or we want some text in here, then we can change these surrounding tags. So change that to, I don't know, h4 or something. Or we can embed multiple layers of tags. So we want another tag in here. So let's say we want a paragraph tag, and we want some junk in here. We can change this one, or we could delete it. So we could go delete the surrounding tag, and now it's just all in the same block. I know I went through that pretty quickly, but when we actually go into what the plugins are doing, I'll go through it a bit slower. So another thing you might want to do is make some variables. So let's say you wanted to do something like var i equals quotes, and then as you can see, it's auto made the quotes for us. So we can put some junk in here. Let's say we wanted to make another one, but this time instead of using quotes, we wanted to use apostrophes. As you can see, that also works as we would expect as well. Now, you might not agree that everything that I've done here is completely essential. If you're more used to working with a vanilla Vim experience, you might not agree that everything here is absolutely required. But I came from working with VS Code and other more complete editors like that, so for me, I can't get any work done without this basic stuff here. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. So we have three plugins we're looking at today. Vim Close Tag, COC Pairs, and Vim Surround. So Vim Close Tag should be pretty obvious what this one's doing. It'll let you auto close the tags. Now, the reason why we're using this one as opposed to any of the other numerous Close Tag plugins that exist is because most of them just don't work for JSX files. Even the ones that say do actually work for it, I just haven't got working. This one on the other hand, it doesn't care what the file type is. If you say I want it to work in this file type, it's just gonna do its job in that file type even if that file type shouldn't have tags in it. Like, let's say you're doing something in a TXT file or even like a .sh file. If you say, I want this plugin to be activated in this file, it's just gonna work in that file and it 
doesn't care what the file type is, which I find to be absolutely awesome. So if you want to make some sort of new file that supports tags, Vim close tag is probably the best way to go. Now, CRC pairs is for creating any of the other pairs like quotation marks or apostrophes. Now, the reason why I'm using this one as opposed to something like auto pairs, one is because I already have CRC installed. But if you're someone like a you complete me user, feel free to use something like auto pairs instead. And the other reason I'm using this is because unlike something like auto pairs, all this plugin does is creates pairs. It doesn't add any extra bindings to create pairs. All it does is you've created a quotation mark here. Okay, I'm going to create a new quotation mark here. Or you've deleted one side of the quotation mark. Okay, I'm going to delete the other side. Things like this. It doesn't add extra bindings to make it easier to work with them. All it does is makes pairs. And the last one we have is Vim Surround. Now Vim Surround does a bunch of different things. This is the plugin that I was using to rename the tags and to delete the tags. That's pretty much the only behavior I'm using for web development, but it also let you do things like change your surrounding quote marks to apostrophes or your apostrophes to quote marks and a bunch of other things like that. I've done a dedicated video on Vim Surround, so feel free to go check that out as well. Okay, first we'll install everything and then we'll get to configuring it. So Firstly, what I'm going to do is open up my nvim config. If you're using regular vim, you'll want to open up your vimrc. NeoVim like I am, then it'll be your init.vim. But I presume you already know where those files are located if you're watching a video like this. Now, I'm using a vim plug to install my plugins. If you're using something like Vundle, the steps will be very similar. If you don't have a vim plugin manager, I would recommend looking into downloading vim plug. It'll just make it way easier to do. I know you can do stuff manually, but it's just a bit easier with a plugin manager. Now the first one we're going to install is vim close tag. So for vim plug, I write plug apostrophe alvin slash vim dash close tag. So that is the developer slash the name of the repo. And then for vim surround, basically the same thing. So tpo slash vim dash surround. Now for coc pairs, it's a little bit different. If you're using something like auto pairs though, Auto pairs would be done in the same way. CRC pairs, however, is technically not a Vim plugin. It's actually a COC plugin, but that's just a minor detail. So what we have to do instead is put it into our COC global extensions list. Basically, just write in COC pairs, and then we'll be ready to install everything. So once you've done that, I would recommend just saving and quitting the file. You can just resource the file, but I find this to just be a bit quicker. Now just open up an empty Vim buffer, and what we're going to do is write plug install. If you're not using vim plug, then it'll be a little bit different. I'm not sure how you do it in Vundle. If you use Vundle, though, I presume you know how to use that one. So vim plug, we just write plug install, and then it's just going to try to install the plugins. I've already got everything downloaded, though. And the next thing we have to do is also write coc install. And that is this one right here. Run that, and it'll take a couple of seconds to go through that. Now, I've already got everything installed, so it's not going to do anything for me. For you, though, it'll say downloading COC pairs. Okay, let's go back to my Vim config and get stuff configured. So the first thing we're going to configure, I guess, is, I don't know, Vim close tag, because that'll be the easiest one to do. So that'll be down here. Cool. So I've got this big block of options. So basically, all of this stuff here is boilerplate. What you're going to do is come over to the GitHub page, and on here, there's a bunch of options. All we're going to do is copy all of this in and then just paste it in here. So what we need to do then is start editing the file types that we want supported. I want to have HTML, XHTML, JSX, JS, and TSX supported if you want to also support, I don't know, .txt files. That's something else you could do as well. So star dot the file extension. And then do the same thing for the second one. So all the different file types you want supported basically do the same thing here. And then for the next one, do the same thing, but this time don't include the star dot. So these are just file types. These were for file names. So just include JSX, JS, and TSX. TSX is there if I want to do JSX in a TypeScript file. And then do the same thing for the next one as well. So JSX, JS, and TSX. All of the rest of the stuff, I would recommend just leaving at the default values, but there is some stuff we can change in here. So close tag shortcut, will basically be the key that actually activates the plugin. So basically what this is going to do is say we're writing out a tag, so h2, and then if we write greater than, what it's going to do in a supported file is actually make the other side of the tag. But you could change this to be something like c. And then if you do it like that, what it's going to do is 
is change this C into being a greater than sign and then make the closing tag. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that because it kind of defeats the usability. The way I like to work with this is as I actually write out the tag, it will then actually create the other side. If instead of doing a greater than sign here, I have to do some other sort of character, it doesn't feel as natural for me. So I recommend just leaving it at the default value, but if you need to change it, then it is a thing you can do. And the other thing you might want to change is how to create a greater than sign in a supported file without actually closing a tag. By default, that's set up to be on leader greater than, but if you want it to be on, I don't know, greater than, greater than, or C greater than, whatever it is you want it bound on, you can do that. Once again, though, I find this to just be the most natural. So for me, that would be space greater than. Obviously, this isn't a supported file, but you kind of get the idea. Now for COC pairs, there's not much we have to do, but there is one little thing we have to configure. So if we just go over to our COC config, now to get to that, basically just write in the command COC config, and that'll open that up. And there's one thing in here we need to do, and that is the pairs.enable characters. As you can see, there's one character missing from this list, and that character is the less than sign. When we write a less than sign, it'll automatically put a greater than sign to the right of it, which completely breaks our vim close tags. So make sure you remove the less than sign from this list. If you're using something like auto pairs, I'm not sure how to do it over there, but I'm pretty sure there is a way to disable certain characters. Now that's actually the end of it for the configuration because there's nothing we have to do for vim surround. It's just gonna work perfectly fine out of the box. So let's just take a bit of a slower look into how this will actually work. So I'll just open up a new buffer and get it all set up for us. Okay, so here we have a JSX buffer set up. So what we can do now, let's start writing out a tag. So if I start writing in H2 and then I write a greater than sign, it'll automatically create the closing tag for it. Now, the way that we actually change these surrounding tags with Vim surround is with CS, so change surround, tag, change the surrounding tag to another tag. So C S T T change surrounding tag to a tag. And as you can see, there's a little prompt down the bottom. So what we can do here is just write in a new tag we want to have. So it doesn't just have to be an HTML tag. It could be something that's more react like. So something like say node, as you can see, it's automatically changed that over. Now, if we want to delete a tag, what we do is D S T delete surrounding tag. So D S T, as you can see, it's now deleted that. Okay, so what about these variables then? So what we can do here is just write out var i equals, and then all we have to do here is if we write a quote mark, and as you can see, it's automatically created both sides of the quote, and we can just start writing stuff in here as well. One thing I mentioned earlier was the fact that you can change the quote marks into apostrophes. So cs quote apostrophe. So change surrounding quote to apostrophe, and you can do it the other way as well. So change surrounding apostrophe to a quote, or you could even go delete surrounding quote. I don't really know why you do that in most situations, but if you needed to do that, then that is something that is available to you as well. One other thing you can use is YS from Vim surround as well. So if we do YSIWT, so that is YS, which is add a new tag, IW, which means in word, T, which means tag. So YSIWT, that'll basically let us add a new surrounding tag. I don't find myself using this one too often because generally I already have the tags made in my return statement. But if for whatever reason you need to add a new tag, the ys command is also available to you as well. So I think that might be everything for today. Now obviously this isn't the only set of plugins I use when I'm doing web development. There are other things as well. But if I was setting up a new Vim config, these are the three plugins alongside obviously COC that I would have to download straight away to get any work done. There are other things that I use as well, but some of those are a bit less essential. This is the absolute foundation for what I need to get my work done. And as I said earlier, there are some alternatives for things like COC pairs and close tag. For the close tags alternative, I don't know how well those work, but there are perfectly good alternatives for doing auto pairs. Vim surround, I don't know if there's an alternative for just because T-Pope did such an amazing job on that plugin, but there could be if you wanted to try one out. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Gabriel, P.E, Road, Tony, Nolan, Larry, and Zilver. 
If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want to get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on YouTube and Library for the video version, and also anywhere you listen to podcasts for the audio version. I've also got this channel on Library and BitTube as well, so feel free to go check that out over there as well. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.